I'm Brian with Historic Woodwork and welcome back to Florida. We have a set of windows here that uh, are badly in need of some attention and I have completed this side. Now I have yet to do the other side and as you can see they have succumbed to the elements and the vicissitudes of the weather. I'm afraid that upper sash is going to have to go. This lower sash was in the same condition and I swapped it out with one that I happen to have and now these windows work beautifully. Well here we are in Seminole Heights, a historic district of Tampa, Florida. This particular house is not in the historic district, but nevertheless, it is a historic house. A 1920s craftsman style bungalow. Up until the 1950s, people used to open their windows to get a breeze through the house, but that went away with the advent of air conditioning. I dare say these windows haven't been opened in 30 or 40 years. And in order to get them to open again, I first will begin by cutting away the paint that seals these perimeter moldings and then start prying on the window sashes to get them out. Once that's accomplished, we can retrieve the weights behind the wall and attach new sash cord. Um, it's a cotton rope with a polyester filament and this should be good for another 40 years. Before I even commenced work, I covered everything with plastic. I rolled up the carpets, took the curtains down, covered the bed with plastic, covered the laundry basket. That crackling is a good sound. This perimeter stop is rather flimsy and it's certainly very easy to break a piece of it. And if that's the case, we'll just replace it. I'm gonna to try to get behind it with a slender pry bar. And very gently, I'm gonna to attempt to get this thing off of here without breaking it. I want to make sure there's no nails left in the casement or the frame. Here's one. Let's pull that out. Again, I'm going to move in from behind and try to get it just slightly away from the window frame. But this is just a little bit too much to use on something delicate. So. This is called OG. It's a Roman designation for something having to do with the ancient orders of architecture. And this little S-curve is something that originated with the orders of architecture and has found its way into these windows. Isn't that something? Now, see, we've got all these little nails. I like to pull my nails out as I move along, and I pull them out from the back. That way it doesn't leave a, a scar or a pock mark on the front of the casing, and there's a good probability that I can reuse it. So I'm gonna pull my nails out. This one can only go back into position on the right side. And this one can only go back into position on the left side. I'll scrape the uh, excess paint 
that has accumulated. You can see where the paint has crept in behind. The more paint you remove, the uh, easier these windows will function. I've broken it loose on the outside and I've cut away at the paint on the inside. I've removed the perimeter stop moldings, but this thing is still welded in place. So right about here, I'm going to drive this slender little flat bar and uh, it's not unusual for the glass to break although there's no need to be careless you can try to coax this thing out but it does not come out easily it's called a parting stop it's a strip of wood and it's it's all of a half inch wide and about three quarters of an inch in width. Hey, I'm gonna cut away at this with a chisel. Try not to cut into the window sash. Just drive the chisel in at about a 45 or 50 degree angle called a meeting rail or a check rail and pull that thing out of there. And what we are going to do is just very gently pry away. Now <clears throat> if this upper sash is anything like the lower one the ropes have rotted off years ago so anything I do with trying to break this loose this thing has got a propensity to come down and break my wrist <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my hands on it and just very deliberately try to uh, coax this thing out of here and what's what's holding it more than anything is the the paint and sealant on the outside but here we go look at that well i was wrong <laughs> both of the ropes are still attached when this window is up the uh, rope is concealed in the little groove that runs along the side of the sash so in a way it has preserved the rope all these years so i don't think i care to depend on reusing these ropes i'm going to just go ahead and replace them while i've got the whole window apart as i said these ropes fit into a little provision there's a groove or a slot and then there's a little hole right here that the knot is retained in. We're getting in behind the casement or the window frame and I'm going to remove this little pocket of wood called an access panel. Oh, I see what it is. Somebody's put nails in here. Yeah, there's a nail there. And I suspect there's one right there. Well, we are attempting to remove this little strip of wood here that was held in by these little screws. In order to get this out, I'm going to have to cut these nails, and I've got this hacksaw blade. one there's two there you can see the weights have fallen to the bottom 
This is the upper. And there we have the lower sash weight. And uh, good God, that's a clean cut. Somebody deliberately cut that rope. I don't know why they would do such a thing, but that is, that is too clean a cut to be done by Mother Nature. Somebody deliberately cut that rope and let that weight fall into the pocket. And I guess their intentions were that they didn't care whether these windows ever worked again or not. Well, there we go. We have to fish a new rope behind here. So I'm going to have to use this chain and I'm going to use it as a snare to pull a new piece of rope over the pulley and down into the sash pocket. These particular rollers have a cover over them and you just have to fish the chain over it. We're going to have to take this roller out. There. And I'm going to feed this chain over the top. And the, the grab it. So in order to keep the chain from falling back in, put a nail in one of the links while you're doing this busy work down here. Just the simplest first half of a shoelace knot. I'm going to use this chain to pull this rope up over the top of the roller and down into the weight compartment and attach your weight to it and go around back behind and through the more you pull on it the tighter it gets i've made a mark at 16 inches which is approximately where the knot needs to be so i'm going to Put my thumb on that mark and go an extra four or five inches and cut the tail of this off. And again, just a simple little knot. That's all it takes. Well, we have <coughs> successfully retrieved the weights, put new ropes on, cut them to the required lengths. These are called parting stops to go into this channel as so. But before we can put both of them in, we have to put our sash back in place. That I like to take a bar of soap and I like to hit the edges. And anywhere that I think paint could creep in and cause these things to bind up again. And I'm gonna hit the uh, outside face of it, the inside face of it, and I smeared some on the check rail. And now we are ready to reinstall the upper sash. And here is the provision. And I'm going to tuck the excess in there. Let's, let's put a nail in there just for good measure. So, just in case somebody jerks that window 
in the opening and it causes the rope to uh, whip. I don't want that rope to fall out and this window sash to fall on somebody's fingers. I'm using a short enough nail that it won't go in far enough to hit the glass. And now our sash is perfectly balanced and it goes up and down with one finger. What I'm going to do is put our other parting in with a little bit of soap. You have to bring the upper sash all the way down because this needs to fit into this little provision in the sash and then you can slip it in the rest of the way. You notice I haven't used any power tools until now. Let's use our cordless drill uh, only because this is a flimsy frame and there's not much supporting it so if I drove the nail straight in I'd probably deform the frame. I'm just going to put a nail there, a nail here, and one at the bottom. Now the lower sash is one that I rebuilt. Remember the lower sash on this particular window was rotted beyond repair. What could be easier than working on a pair of wooden double hung windows? Now the only remaining thing to do is put these stops back in. There you have it. And you should be able to raise and lower these with one finger. I think it's time to sign off. I'm reasonably certain that anybody can do this. If I can do it, anybody can and you certainly can. I'm Brian with Historic Woodwork and thanks for watching.